Hey guys, CSS box model, let's go. So I've got a really simple page here. We have our title. I've got a div with a class of box on it with a paragraph in there. And everything we're going to be doing today is with our CSS. So I'm going to come down here and we're going to start doing a little bit of CSS. Uh, another thing that I'm going to throw in that I haven't looked at yet is some comments because I think they're going to be useful. If you remember back in, in HTML, sorry, I said we weren't going to be in here, but we'll look. This is an HTML comment. And there's my HTML comment. It's just a little reference for myself. We can also put comments in CSS, but if you use an HTML comment in CSS, it will break your CSS and cause things not to work. And that causes a whole bunch of heartache and you're wondering what you did wrong and it's really annoying. So do not use HTML comments in there. You have to use CSS comments and CSS comments forward slash star. This is my comment star forward slash closes the comment. So it's a little bit easier to write. And uh, let's do uh, this is the, the box model, the CSS box model to be exact. Okay, um, so I have my CSS box model that we want to explore. And it's a weird name, kind of weird in general, but it's not too complicated. So um, what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to give my box a background and let's make it pink. I've been using pink a lot, but it stands out nicely on this background without being too abusive on the eyes. Um, so I have a box. There's my box. It's nice and pink. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this box a width of 300 pixels and I'm going to save that and hit refresh. So now I have a box that's 300 pixels and the height just just automatically calculated. And I can obviously come in there and give it an actual height as well if I want. Now there's three different parts to the box model, and this is why I want to show you comments. But the three different parts are margin. And we'll be looking at what that is. I have uh, padding, and I have the border. And I put those in the wrong order, but that's okay. Uh, a little cut, paste, there we go. Um, so I have my, let's line it all up. I have margins, borders, and padding, and we're going to be looking at all three of them. Margin is nice and simple. I'm going to do a margin of 50 pixels. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to hit my refresh button, and you can see it moved over a little bit, so it sort of popped off to the side. Uh, let's make that even bigger. Let's make it 500 pixels so we can really see it. And it's moving all the way down there. And I even have a scroll bar going up and down on my page now. What margin is doing is it's creating an invisible space all around my box that nothing can go in. So uh, let's add a little bit more text actually after this. We could use another paragraph. So I'll just copy this one. So I've got this 500 pixel space and just to show it even more there's my paragraph after so I have 500 pixels here and then I have 500 pixels here and I have 500 pixels there it's pushing everything away by 500 pixels and it's even doing 500 pixels on it's putting 500 pixels on all sides so let's jump back up to here and let's just make that a more reasonable 50 pixels save that refresh and there we go, I got 50 pixels here, 50 pixels there, and 50 pixels over here as well. And well, that's what margin is, it pushes things away. And we can control any of these uh, with, say I can do a margin top of 50 pixels. So it's only going to look at the margin top. So here I have 50, and then those ones it's keeping at the defaults that we had before. I can do a margin bottom of 100 pixels, save and it pushes that down 100 pixels. I can do a margin on the left of let's say 200 pixels and it will push it over by 200. And I could do a margin on the right too, except we won't see anything happen because there's nothing over here on the right side. So uh, let's just bring that back to a margin 100 pixels and refresh. And there we go, there's my box. And let's take it next 
Look at the next one uh, is our border. Border has three different properties that we need to worry about. So it's probably the most complicated one, or it is. Uh, we have a border uh, width, first of all. So I'm going to do a five pixel border. I'm going to have a border color of red. And I'm going to have a border style. And I'm just going to put solid for now. It's the one you'll see the most often, but we'll look at a few different border styles in there. So I've saved that. I'm going to hit refresh. And you can see it's put a border all the way around my box. And that's pretty simple. Um, it's a red border. It's five pixels thick. And it goes all around the sides. Just like my width, I can add a, a border only on some size. So I could say border left. And I'm just going to copy that save, refresh, and I only get a border on the left. And, you know, I could actually use this and then come in with a border right uh, width of let's say 10 pixels, border right style of solid, and a border right color of green and refresh and then I get a green border over on that side. You'll also see uh, it doesn't really matter the order that I put them in with color style and with style color and you could any order you put them in it will work fine. But what if you forget one of them? Let's take off my border left style and it just disappears completely including the width. The width just doesn't uh, isn't included there. So uh, what if I forget the color? the color will go to a default. And if I forget a size, it shows up anyway. I didn't save my CSS. Ah, there we go. Um, the width does have a default on it. So if you forget the width, you should still see a border. It's defaulting to what looks like two pixels. If you forget the color, it will go to a default color. And if you forget the style, it just won't show up. So make sure you have a style. There is a shorthand for all this. Uh, you can just do border and write the three properties you want. Five pixels, solid, green. And I get on all sides. Or you could, of course, do uh, border left, five pixels, solid, red. And I wonder what's going to happen now. I have a border and a border left. Well, this one is second, so this should work. And this should overwrite the left side. And there we go, my left border is now red, whereas the rest of them are all green. If I accidentally put this one up here, it doesn't work. Because what's happening is it's making the left border red, and then it's coming here and going, well, all my borders are green, so all the borders are becoming green. The order here really matters. It's a continuation of the cascade and the way the cascade works. It's reading through this in order. So it's making all of my borders green and then going, oh, the one on the left should be red instead. And we can do that. Uh, I mentioned that there's other options in solid. So let's just keep that and uh, let's just change border style. And uh, dashed, dotted, double, groove, hidden means you don't see it, none, we don't see it. Uh, inset, ridge, solid. Outset. Uh, a lot of these are really ugly, just so you know. Uh, let's try the groove. And what's going to happen now is it's going to set them all to green solid. It's going to make the left one red. And then my border style, instead of being solid, is going to get overwritten again and turn to green. And let's just make this a lot bigger. Uh, 15. Just so you can see it a little more, it's putting this really ugly 3D effect on it. That's the groove. Let's try inset. One too many semicolons. Inset. And it does another really ugly one. Let's try. The double's not terrible. Double is a double border. Uh, there's dotted. It gives me square dots. Uh, this obviously looks better if it's a smaller number not as ugly even though I wouldn't not super nice either right now uh, but you get the idea uh, in general solid is what I'm going with and in general I'm not overwriting the same style a whole bunch of times I'm making one style 
and I'm sticking to it. And let's make that 10. And there we go. I got my red border. Now, the last one is padding. And people mix up padding and margin all the time because they work really similar to each other. So I'm going to make the value of them both the same. And right away, you're going to see the difference. I'm going to hit refresh here. And well, look at that. My box is huge now. Padding and margin both work in a very similar way. Uh, they both create empty space. The difference is margins create empty space without a background color. Padding creates empty space with the background color. And that's a very big distinction. The problem is if you don't have a background color, you don't see the difference, especially if you don't have a border either. Um, they both look like they're sort of doing the same thing. I have margin and I have padding. What's the big deal? Let's bring that back so we have our box. Uh, there we go. So, uh, but it's a very big difference. Margin is pushing away from things, empty, invisible space. Padding is creating empty space with my background color. And that's a very, very important thing to remember. I think I need more background, I need padding. And just like all the other ones, I can do different things. I can say, or different sides, padding top, 25 pixels, padding left, 20, let's say 50 pixels, padding right, 100 pixels, and padding bottom, 300 pixels. Let's make a big, big padding on the bottom there. So I have my 25 on the top, 50 on the left, 100 on the right, and my big 300 pixels down here on the bottom. Both for margin and for padding, there's shorthand for doing this if you want things to be different though. So let's say I want my padding and I want to do uh, 50 on the top, 100 on the right, 300 on the bottom, and let's just do 25 on the left this time. It's gonna change a little bit, I think. Yeah, I didn't keep the same numbers. Uh, this is going top, right, bottom, left and the that's not the way we end a comment and let's put that underneath there we go so top right bottom and left and uh, it's like a clock so we start here and we go around clockwise and that's the only way you'll ever remember it if you try and just go you know the order of it seems pretty random and then tell you go clockwise and then it sort of makes sense I can also uh, shorten it up so we know if I just do 100 pixels, it's just gonna put 100 pixels on all four sides. And uh, if I put two values, pixels, you'll see that it's doing, it's starting at the top again. So it's going, uh, I keep doing this the wrong way. It's doing top and uh, well, I can't fit it in the way I'd want. This first value is top and bottom, and the second value is left and right. So if you know your top and bottom are the same, and your left and right are different from the top and bottom, but they're the same as each other, you can write it out like this, and it's much faster to do. And you can do the same thing with your margins. So 100 pixels and zero will make it 100 on the top and bottom, and zero on the left and the right, so it should come close over to here. You can add a third value in there, so 100 and 200 pixels means 100 on the top, 0 left and right, and 200 on the bottom. So my left and right are the same, my top is this, and my bottom is right there. And you can do that for your padding as well. And let's just change that one back to 100. Now the last thing to remember with the box model is the way widths are calculated. So right now, the width of my box is 300 pixels. And that's 300 pixels starting here and ending right here. And I'm gonna bring up something, uh, it's called inspect element. It's just gonna help us visualize all of this a little better. And I do have an entire video on this, but uh, just very quickly, you can see there is my paragraph. And there we go, this is what I was looking for. Uh, the blue box there has the width of 300 pixels on it. So I have a 300 pixel box, but then on the left and the right, I have an extra 25 pixels of padding. So I have 25 pixels here, 
and I have 25 pixels here. And then I have an extra 10 pixels here and an extra 10 pixels here. And then I have an extra 100 pixels here and one extra pixels here, 100 extra pixels here. All of this together is what gives me my total width. The height is the same thing. The height of it isn't, well, I don't have a height set, so the height doesn't really matter. So the total width of this whole thing isn't 300 pixels. The total width of this entire thing is 300 pixels plus 100 on my margin plus 100 from my margin, because remember this margin is left and my margin on the right, plus padding of 25 on the left, plus a padding of 25 on the right, plus a border of 10, plus a border of 10, which should give me, let's see how fast I can do my math, uh, 3, 4, 5, 5, 50, 5, 60, 5, 70. Hopefully I got that right. Gives me a total width of 570 pixels. Right now, this might not seem like the most important thing to remember, but very soon we're gonna have two things that go next to each other, and if they run out of room, they don't go next to each other anymore, they fall one on top of each other. So understanding how the box model works, we have our margins, our border, and our padding. So margin is empty space around my block, around my element. Border is uh, a border or stroke around my element. Stroke uh, for anyone who's coming from Photoshop or Illustrator. And uh, padding is empty space with background around my element. And all of these add on top of my, on top of the width and height. And the width is really the more important thing here. So I'm not, you know, I'm setting a width of 300, but this is much bigger than 300 now. And just to show you padding of say 500, and right away you'll see, whoops, let's just do 500 on all sides. Uh, and now I have like my big scroll bar here, even though I've only told this that it should be 300 pixels, it's clearly not only 300 pixels because I have my big scroll bar, it's way too big for my screen now. So that's the CSS box model. It's not too complicated. There's a few things to remember in there, but uh, the biggest takeaways, margin is empty space, pushing things away. Padding is empty space that includes my background. So every time I need more background, I add padding. And the border gives me you know, borders around my box. And all of those add on top of the total size of my box. So I have the original box, plus my margins, plus my border, plus my padding. And it's important to remember, and they also go in that order. I didn't mention that, but it's always my box, my padding, my border, and then my margins on the outside of that. And it's always going to be in that order. It doesn't matter which way you write it here. If padding comes first, it's still going to look exactly the same. You can't change the order of them. So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. We're gonna keep getting through this very soon. You're actually gonna be able to make your own page with your own layout. It, we're getting close. Again, if you have any questions, any comments, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. And uh, I can't wait to see you at the next video.